And I think we'll see a lot more snipers come out next patch. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Correct response. But yeah. I, I think Brits, without the anti-infantry potential of, of the AEC, they will have to use snipers more. Um, uh, until, you know, the, the upgrades on your Tommies, the squads, the, the weapon racks, I think until they're a bit more affordable, um, I, I think we'll, we'll see people just continue to rely on the sniper. Oh, you can't forget the Brim Pinata from uh, the Vet 3 Tommies. Yeah, it's brutal. But anyway, we are now in our game. I'm going to try and put this, the music back on. Hopefully it won't do the weird bug where it plays the music twice. I probably should have restarted my game, but oh well. Uh, a little bit too late now. So, I am GG the Machine. Joining me is Mr. Tightrope from New Zealand. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. All good. So, we have game three between Korean Army and Momo. Momo going with US forces and Korean Army as Ostia. We're on Faymanville. I did put my score on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Score's important. You can't have a fun time without a score. Sorry, I should have done this before we started the game. <laughs> yeah, right. three minutes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Scores on, one for one. That is the score. We had a, a very, very tight and close game uh, in the first match. Korean Army uh, pulling ahead in what was pretty much one of the, the best comebacks in all of NA ESL. Uh, Momo for show, we didn't quite catch uh, the second game, but apparently he just blitzed through the second match, which is why we're actually uh, missing it, because it, it happened so fast. And we were a little bit late with our first cast, so it means we were a little bit far ahead. Um, far, far, far behind, in fact. Uh, so this is the decider for the, the quarterfinals uh, for uh, number eight in a cup. So whoever wins this will move on to the semifinals. So we are making way uh, in today's tournament. Yeah, and uh, Momo got an interesting loadout. He's got mechanized in there. Probably more to counter OKW than anything else, but <laughs> I would love to see a bit of Mechanized. <laughs> yeah, it's just great seeing that. The Mechanized, I think it works well against OKW because you have that, that fast truck which can just take down the Kubel you know, so quickly and catch it really off guard. Uh, and also, I, I think the 155 Artillery Barrage is the best against trucks. It's so powerful. Oh, so good. More than time yeah. on target is for the company. Uh, but against, yeah, against I mean... Wehrmacht, sorry? I mean, you just come in there with a Sherman, get two shots on the HQ, and then drop that artillery, and it's dead. Like, it's very yeah. poison. You don't need a lot of follow-up to take it down. But against Wehrmacht, there, there really is just not much use for it here. Like, un unless you want to go for some really crazy play, like, you know, double Stuart, and then you refit them into a Sherman or something, or a Jackson. But realistically, you know, when you, when you have commanders as strong as tactical support with the M19s, with the Calliope... Uh, when you have the Pershing and Rangers, there, there's just not much reason uh, to go for anything else, really. And that's what we've seen throughout ESL. Mm. That's an interesting bit of why he's put down on the fuel there. Korean Army? Yeah. It's <laughs> a great wall of wire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Momo is a Mongol, however, so he can probably just go around that one. Uh, <laughs> It, it's not really comprehensive, but it, it still will delay uh, the cutoff, which is very important. And it's also one of those things that it, it kind of messes up your pathing and you don't realize it. Like, especially if he puts shoom, uh, S mines below it, uh, it'll automatically path units in. But actually, we have an MG flank from Momo here. He's sent all three squads up to the north, so he will force the MG away. And even the Grens and Pyos, this is a bad engagement for Korean Army to find here. Rifleman up closer, so much more powerful than the Grens. He just wanted to bleed those riflemen, that low squad, but he's definitely going to lose this one. Oh, it's vaults the fence by accident, taking a lot of damage from the Pyos. That was a bit <laughs> of a misclick there. Oh dear, that would have gone much better if he didn't vault that fence. Jeez, almost loses that squad of riflemen. And the sniper's already on the field now. Yep, yeah, but I imagine Momo's going to be bringing out a M20 shortly. Lieutenant's about to pop out. Yeah, pretty standard choice here from Momo. Uh, going M20 uh, is great counter to the Sniper, and it's a pretty open map, so you, you can use it with a fair bit of freedom here. There's still, of course, a fair bit of choke points to be wary of. Currently, we see no munitions spending by Korean Army, so Momo will have to be a little bit careful of mines. Uh, there's actually a mine sweeper, so that's where the munitions has been spent into for Korean Army. 
Mm, the early Minesweeper was no real point at this, <laughs> at this stage of the game, is there? Maybe he's worried a bit about the heavy care of uh, rifleman mines, but. Yeah. Seems unlikely this early. It's a good map for mines because you have some some very thin spots where mines are very powerful, and you want to have that against the M20 mines anyway. So I, I guess it doesn't hurt to have it earlier. So we're actually oh. cutting the wire here. Mm. Memo, you're going to be able to cap that feel a little bit easier. Sniper forced to retreat there as well. Probably a good timing actually though, because the M20 is fresh on the field. Yeah. So. It's actually kind of worked out for him quite well. Going straight for the MG. Didn't have the MG in that house there, which is where it's really hard to push out. So, Korean Army's lost his hold on the map here. And is he actually going in for a dive? While well, he is, there is this Grand Squad retreating. So, perhaps he will back away? No, he's going balls deep for the sniper. He will get it as well. Actually going for the bunker. Smart move. No, he loses it. But no, nice try there anyway. Uh, but he will lose the sniper here. He can probably escape here. Uh, it has the armored skirts, but taking a fair bit of damage from the MG on the rear armor. MG sitting up as well here. Another Faust will come through. If he can smoke and repair critical, he'll be able to do it. Let's see. Echelon up the north as well. Has the munitions for it. Oh, abandoned! He drops oh. the bazooka as well! Oh, no. oh, I think he actually, like, evac'd it as it was abandoned. Man, that is the worst draw there. <laughs> Left so the bazooka, good. but actually I think the Echelon killed... Yeah, the Echelon focused it down, which was lucky here, because it had armored skirts, but... Oh well, trading a sniper for an M20, not too bad, but giving the bazooka away is uh, unfortunate, but at least it wasn't taken. If Korean Army got the M20 and a 222, that would be pretty damn rough, would, would force the captain. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly could have gone a lot worse for Momo there. Yeah. Oh, he's taking grenades now, interesting choice. I'm kind of surprised he doesn't follow this up with an AA half-track. Yeah, I think he might regret the nades when he sees the 222. But the mines, the nades are certainly good to have against MGs in particular. There is only AMG though, but maybe he wants to have some smoke plays. I, mean, I think grenades are such an underused ability uh, for US. Um, but generally, you, you want to have a light vehicle on the field beforehand. In, in which case, there was, but not anymore. You can see he lost it. Still, Momo is above in squads. He's got three squads of rifle, he's got an LT against only two Grens, a Pyo, and, a, and an MG. Uh, so, definitely the man advantage is there for Momo. The nades uh, makes it even more in the favor of the US. Oh, he's popping incendiary rounds on that MG now, trying to force the lieutenant out of the garrison. Yeah, he will actually. The rifleman actually pops the smoke, so he will get the feel. That is the great advantage of the smoke. Something that we didn't see Burmy make use of in our first round is use the smoke to secure the cap without taking manpower bleed. US uh, are probably affected most by manpower bleed because the riflemen are so expensive um, to, to keep reinforcing, especially when you're versing uh, things like a sniper and the 222 that can have pretty free harassment from afar. Once again, smoke nades come through, gets the point and retreats. Very nice work from Momo. Yeah, helped by the fact that the 222 doesn't have attack ground, of course. Yeah, that's true. And there's... Oh, there's actually medics now for Korean Army, so you will have his squads healing up. Pegrens are being built here, and we know Korean Army loves his Pegrens. Yeah, pretty good map for Pegrens, of course. See if you play them on the... quite effectively up there. Yeah, and it will be the captain coming out from Momo, so he will have the double bazookas. Great response to the, the 222, and may go for a pack howitzer afterwards. Momo's looking pretty good here. He's got a VP lead as well. 500 against the 345 of Korean Army. And the MG is not an issue. He just smokes it off and charges it. Forces the retreat. Fuel bit captured back here. And triple cap especially. So Momo really having an uh, impactful early game. Yeah, he's got the captain now. So that'll keep that 2 2, -two at bay. I think the, the biggest swing was when Momo, he went for the sniper. Such a, a crucial decision to make is, do I retreat? Do I go for the sniper? He lost the M20, which is technically worse when you look at the fuel and the munitions cost. But I think the impact those two units have, it makes the trade worth it. Yeah, me too. Otherwise, that sniper can really be a big issue for US players in the late game. Yeah, Momo has a lot of munitions still, so he's going to have 
no shortage of mines. And hasn't locked in the commander either. Has not a lot of command points, so we may just see him rush out a, a Sherman from his major tech, but probably after he goes a pack howitzer, having a fair bit of manpower, not really much fuel. Because who's got to be careful because there's that captain in the garrison right there. <laughs> He's getting the heck out of there. Oh, now Captain's coming around on the flank. Yeah, he's charging forward. Not ever a good engagement here by Momo, but he's holding the field. That's what matters. Nade comes yeah, through as up. well. Oh, that could definitely be a wipe here. Does Whoa. lose the squad. The vision was, I think, obscured, and he, uh, Kareem couldn't see that one coming. I didn't see it until it was too late. That LMG Grand Squad down is a huge blow. That was the only LMG on his Grands, and now Korean Army is even further behind in his squad count. It actually will be a, a Stuart, so I uh, will be going for, for that one. Yeah, and once he sees that Stuart, maybe forced. I mean, what, what's he got? He doesn't even have mobile defense, so he can't even bring in the Boomer. Maybe he's just going to try and wait until 7 CPs for that Stuggy. Yeah, Stuggy is not really strong against the, the Stuart, but it will certainly be a deterrent. Uh, so I, I think Momo is, is just has such a great um, potential now, and he has even more smoke, the off-map smoke barrage. The, the middle MG has got the, the house uh, in a great position here, and no pack howitzer, but the steward will be able to force that one away. Until the pack is on the field, which is a, a little bit far off now, and, and Momo is just continuously using these smokes. It's just giving him the map control. Stuart going in deep for this 2-2-2, gets the stun round. And there's a bazooka available here, but it's not in position. It's going to be the fall of this scout car. Gren's moving in for a Faust, but it won't even matter. No, and with that death of the scout car, <laughs> things are looking pretty grim. You really needed a grenadier there for support and try to get that Faust off. But he yeah. just didn't have enough squads after losing that one to that I think grenade the, earlier. The biggest mistake was not getting an earlier pack. As, as Axis, no matter what matchup you're in, you pretty much need to have an AT gun ready and waiting because allies will always get a vehicle of some kind and they have such a strong impact against squads and if there was a pack nearby, uh, you know, he wouldn't be able to force away that steward but the problem for the Korean army is he just lost too many squads that he couldn't really afford to build the pack because if he did, he would have lost even more territory. So it, it was kind of a lose-lose. I don't think Korean Army really had uh, much chance to, to really come back from this one. Well, However... We have, yeah, <laughs> we saw the miracle plays earlier, so yeah. can't count them out yet. We, we, we say that, but in the first game, it, it was so much more in the favor of Momo than what it is now. Uh, however, Momo, he does only have... 200 more VPs left to, to close this game out. And he's putting mines down uh, from the, the the Pershing commander. What are they? The, the rifleman defensive defenses. structures. Yeah. Yeah. But he's getting pretty close to those Stuggies now. About a quarter of command point away. So, let's just see what he can get done with those. Of course, Mormo already going for M1. Probably expecting that. Yeah, that's really smart. Momo already has an AT gun, so even if a Stug E comes out, it's not going to really have much of an impact. And we see Momo is aggressively scouting for mines. So this is, is awesome to see. He sees there's no telemines. He knows how aggressive he can be with his Stuart now. Yep, oh, Korean Army going for some assault grenadiers here. This is a very unusual decision. Ooh, that mine! Mine gets the wipe of the south with the help of that nade. Yeah, assault grins, what? I suppose it replaces now dead tons of grins, but... <laughs> Except without any received accuracy. Yeah, well... I mean, received accuracy bonuses, I guess. The squad, they just, they're just so vulnerable that they, they die uh, very easily, but... It's, it's pretty desperate, you know, he, he needs to do something now, otherwise the VPs will drain. Oh, nade comes through. Did he nade himself? I, I don't know, I didn't see I, that. I, I think he naded himself in that middle house. <laughs> and it wasn't a rifle nade, there was a timer on it. Here we go, captain in the house here. We'll force away the Stug. Air screens though, making short work of the M1. Ah. So they're good against support weapons because of the sprint. Whether it's AT guns or, or MGs. This middle house actually is getting pretty damn low here. 
This could be a death sentence for this captain. He evacs out of it. Well, the Korean army slowed down the, the VP bleed. Probably needs to bring in a second Chuggy. That seems to be the go-to in these situations. Bring up two, and then it really makes mint speed out of those US Forces squads. Yeah, that, that'll certainly help now, but it'll delay his, his Tiger. So it's going to be a hard decision to make. Uh, you know, does, does he need the mid-game victory now, or does he try and play the late game with that Tiger? Because once again, the Pershing is going to be an option, and it will come out... Uh, a fair bit away though, just because Momo's command points is the limiting factor more so than resources. Yeah, probably. But it is indeed a second struggle, so he's going to make the most of uh, what he can right now. But Momo actually going for a second M1 anti tank gun, so. Yeah, he must really read these Stuggies and. For him, the Stuggies are the only problem. Like, he's, he's got no issues with his squads, the Grands, the Assault Grands. He has more riflemen and he has, like, more squads and he has better nades. So, I, I think anticipating the only thing that can be a problem and reacting to that is is how, you know, good players are always able to, to come ahead, is, is by having the tools they need. Uh, the Stuggie is just not effective against AT guns, uh, the, the M1s, of course. Going to be able to completely shut those down. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Only one squad available for repairs as well, so both those Stuggies are quite wounded, and uh, Green Army's having to pull them out of combat as a result of that. Yeah. Do you think Momo. Or do, do you think Korean Army should have rebuilt a sniper? Maybe. Huh? The enemy is well, you went really quiet. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you, you went really quiet for some reason. No, it's your sound card. Hope not. Uh, I'll just change you on Skype. That's strange. Okay, I've boosted you up a bit now. So, say something? Yeah, hey, yeah, I'm here. Okay, you're super loud and, and masculine now, so that's good. That's what we want. We want to have that, that deep, tightrope voice coming in our ears. This one's goes out to the ladies. <laughs> Smooth. Smooth. Alright, so we're back in action here. Despite Skype's best attempts to impede such. And once again, the smoke nade secures the capture. This is this is awesome. I, I love seeing this. I'm very happy right now. M1 starting to fire on the stook. Gets behind the, the trees. So he can't quite fire through that or anything, despite his attempts. Yeah, I feel like Momo could actually do some bars right about now and he'd win these infantry engagements a lot more convincingly if he did. Yeah, a, a good option. Like, people generally don't go the weapon racks because they delay your tanks. But when Momo is stalling for a Pershing, of which you, he basically has the fuel required, uh, it, it's it's more just the, the the timing of the command point. So, yeah, going for bars, I think, would, would be an excellent choice. Bazooka is probably unnecessary. He has the AT guns, but the, yeah. the bars would, would would put the Grens even further behind. Unless he wants to save it for his combined arms, it's an ability you don't see very often. <laughs> yeah, it does give the Pershing the extra five range. Yeah. Either way, Vet three MG. That's pretty nice. MG. I'm going to take a nade though, but he was fairly spread out, as they typically are when they're not uh, behind cover. Wow, he's gone for a third Stuggy. Wow. Well... This was unexpected. Yeah. I don't know how well it'll fare against two AT guns, especially when the Pershing shows up. Actually, he dropped a bazooka on the ground, but it will get picked up by the rifleman. Nate's come through, he wants to try and kill this Stug, but he's going to take a fair bit of damage from the Grens and, and, and the Stuggy on the side. Smokes it off, but the, the base MGs actually secure the suppression there. Yeah, now he's got a pretty sizable army, as you can see. He's up to 71, and Momo's down at 50, so... He's uh, pulled ahead in that respect. Momo's stalling for that Pershing, but it's starting to cost him a bit of map control. Yeah, it certainly is. He's going to have a lot of fuel banked up when he does hit 13 command points. 
but it, it's kind of in an awkward window because it's not really enough of a window for him to go major tech. So he's kind no. of stuck here waiting. Oh, last shot, bounce off the Stug E. Does survive this He does this still one. have full armor, remember? I think it's 160, so... Can bounce those AT guns. Those yeah. US Forces AT guns, that is. Yeah, not not very powerful penetration-wise, unless they pop the, the AP ammo. So, Korean Army is holding the VPs and the map. Korean Army is such a great player at uh, really playing from from behind and he's basically been able to to rebuild his squads because I think recently Momo's been taking a lot more manpower bleed than what Korean Army has. the squad just go down on that garrison. Oh, it was still a shot, was it? Yeah, I think that was a rifle squad there. Uh, was it LT? It, no, it was a rifle squad. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that's a bit of a blow there. Actually, still he in a bit of trouble here. Wait, he even put a Stuart. Oh, attacking the AP ammo, oh, Nate comes of, through. Yeah. Dense action going on on many different fronts. Yeah, a lot of Stuggies are firing from the side, and that was the LT got wiped. Wow, oh no. I suppose it is speeding up the command point clock, but this yeah. is not what you want to have happen. <laughs> AT gun setting up as well as the captain here. Nate's going to come through from the Rifleman, perhaps? Still is up oh, close. Going to try and capture the... Yeah, he gets the kill in the end there. So, I think he picked up a bar on his rifle. So, he has a bar and a bazooka here. And his captain actually may get taken out by the Pershing. He has hit the field. So, now this is going to be bad news for Korean Army. Korean Army still got two packs, though. He can't discount that. Yeah. But he's still such a long way away from that tiger. Oh, so much manpower bleed. Momo losing squads, losing his support weapons. The Persian going in deep here. Where are the packs? One of them setting up here. Actually, both of them are set up. Persian should wipe this one. He's activating target weak point. Yeah, there we go. He combined that with the use of the HEVAP round. So he had a, a pretty quick double tap. But actually, another Stuggy is called in for Korean Army. <laughs> Well, this kind of reminds me of Paul's old strategies. He used to go like five or six stuggies over a game. Yeah. So Momo needs to build Echelon because he doesn't have the vehicle crew to repair that apart from his Stuart. Just for the record, was that, that Stuart was rebuilt recently, right? Like it hasn't been there the whole game. No, I thought that was the same Oh, was Stuart. it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess because it, it was highly vetted, but I, I just I was going to say that like it maybe had been a good idea to to build another Stuart just because he didn't have enough fuel to go major, but then having a like a second Stuart would be able to like flank the Stuggies, get the stuns, hold the VPs. It'd be very risky. Um, they do die pretty easily with that many packs, but it, it's something that you can do if, if that situation comes up where you, you can't really go for your your tech, but you still have a bank of resources before your call in. Yeah, what would Jizlin do? <laughs> yeah, but actually, nice flank here. Nade comes through, has a bazooka on the rifleman. One more AT grenade should secure this Stug E. It will come through now. No, that's his alive still, but the bazooka finishes off. Nade from the rifleman, the, the, the rifle of the grenadiers. Uh, that's a confusing way of wording it, but it does almost wipe the uh, rifleman. But actually, the assault grenades, with the help of the Stug E, could secure this wipe. MP40s are enough to get that Vet 3 rifle squad. Momo is running out of troops, but Korean Army running out of Stugs. Yeah, Korean Army also lost a Vet 3 Grin during that engagement. So pretty even in terms of wipes there. And that Grin actually had an LMG and the Bazooka, so he doesn't have that Bazooka rifleman in, oh, Grin anymore. Yeah. And this is a situation where Momo, he can actually wait and stall out. I mean, he doesn't really need to worry about Korean Army's munitions. He, he, you know, he's only going to have a light arty barrage. He won't have a uh, arty cover like like in the first man, first game. And there's been so many Stugs, but the, the Tiger's pretty far off. So Momo can probably just wait until he gets uh, a Jackson or a Sherman. Could even take out this. Oh, the Stug is, is killed. So. Yeah, th this is pretty much what we expected to see. Once the Persing showed up, it's just going to be, you know, absolute duck hunting these Stuggies. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised these Korean Army hasn't brought his packs up trying to uh, follow up on that Persing. He probably could have got an extra couple of licks in there, and at the very least would have delayed its repair times. 
Actually, Korean Army stole an M1 AT gun, so a fair bit of AT guns. Momo just not having really enough squads, and as US, you don't have really any good artillery. Like you have the pack howitzer, but you don't have any like a rocket artillery. You don't have a Katusha or a Panzerwerfer, so it can be kind of hard to deal with very defensive AT gun heavy playstyle. Uh, and that's why the Calliope is so popular. The, the Pershing is still great, uh, has good armor, can bounce those shells. Um, but, yeah, against three AT guns, the Pershing is going to be a little bit risky. How dare you bad mouth the major artillery. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's easily the best one in the game. Oh dear. Kappa face. <laughs> so much Kappa face. Yeah, even the Stug. Uh, even the Stuarts getting bullied, bullying the Stug. I wonder what Momo actually goes for here. He goes for Rangers. Okay, interesting. I mean, he was quite low on squads. So. Yeah, good idea, especially because they're very munitions efficient. You get their, the Thompsons for 90, and then like they can wipe. AT guns, support weapons, grins uh, very easily. So I think that's going to supplement his his tank army uh, pretty effectively. Yeah, he's just got to crack this wall of support weapons. I mean, we've got mortar, three AT guns, and an EMG. A vet it's three gonna EMG. Be, yeah, that's going to be a tough enough to crack. And there's just so much stuff here from Korean army. Especially if Korean Army builds a sniper, that's going to be a really strong counter to the Rangers. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you should build a, a pack house, so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like he does need some form of indirect fire, but as you said, I mean... <laughs> options quite limited with this commander. Yeah, the the uh, howitzer carriage would, would do too much. Like, it's it just dies too easily, and the range isn't really enough to... Comfortably outrange packs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just a pretty bad. Barely unit. outranges the packs and then gets two shot. Yeah, especially against OKW when you have cloaked rockets to deal with. It's just, it's just so not worth it. And like the Sherman would be nice, but with three AT guns, it's. Maybe he just has to build one as a sacrificial lamb. Try and do a diversionary play. Get those AT yeah. guns rotated and then come in from the front with his squads. Especially when Momo has the smoke. The, the off-map smoke barrage and his rifleman smoke, you certainly can make those those all-in plays, um, and, and the Sherman smoke, of course. So, by using the smoke combined with those tanks, you, you certainly can make those big plays, uh, especially if Momo, like, tries to snipe the, the med bunker. Uh, that, that forces the, the AT guns out of position. Um, and actually, he's putting a 50 cal, so I think he wants to kind of park that at the north of EP, maybe leave it in this big garrison. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, I just don't know how he's going to deal with these AT guns. It's... Oh, an MG bunker. That's actually really smart by Korean Army. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like if Momo, Momo was any other allied, it'd, it'd be easy for him to just put a Katusha or a mortar pit. Yep. <laughs> But that's not the case. It's like, even if the Calliope wasn't as, as overpowered as it is, people still are just going to prioritize it because it, it fills a gap that US lacks so desperately in the late game. Yeah. I mean, it kind of needs like some kind of recon run here, just so we can see the lay of the land, see where all those team weapons are located and then make his decisive push. Yeah, the only thing that Major is actually good for, well, apart from the, ret the uh, retreat point, is the, the recon's pretty cheap. And that really helps yeah. uh, for scouting out positioning, as you said, of, of AT gun support weapons. And it'll allow him to go for a, a med bunker snipe. Stuart actually taking a shot from the packs. Another Stug E? <laughs> what? <laughs> If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Because he has three AT guns. Like, does he really need the AT of a Tiger? I, I think it's actually pretty smart because of how many AT guns he has. Yeah. He's so just... in a bit of trouble here, though. It's like a few hits from this Pershing oh. and M1. Oh, loses a Stug E. Nice work here from Momo. 
the, the Pershing and the AT guns, they have a lot of range, especially if he uses the, the take aim uh, on his AT gun. And Momo has so much time. He has 318 VPs, and he's only getting drained one VP at a time. So I, I feel like if Momo just plays it cool, rebuilds his squads, and is actually starting to build some 50 cals uh, as a focus here. As for Korean army, I, I think he does need a Tiger though, just because the Pershing is sniping units pretty reliably. The, the, the Tiger, it, it, it'll chase down the Pershing, it can actually wipe it. AT guns, uh, they're great at forcing away the Pershing, but it, it's really hard to actually kill it. It has so much frontal armor especially. Yeah, but he's doing a really good job putting these BMG bunkers down. Yeah, smart. Is, is, is there another one as well? Oh yeah, on the VP to the south too. So he has two MG bunkers. Yeah. And there's a really big obstacle. All he needs is that bunker there and the pack. And it's a real big obstacle for Moa to try and overcome. It's kind of interesting he didn't... Oh no, okay, now he's going for the Thompsons on his ranges. But they've been on the field for quite a long time. He's only now taking that weapon upgrade. Yeah, they're not bad with their carbines, but you definitely want the upgrade. It, it makes a huge difference to the, the DPS, especially up close. Other than that, we haven't really seen a lot of mines from Momo. He doesn't really have any rifle squads. Y your, your rangers can't plant them, your officers can't plant them, so he only has one squad capable of actually planting mines. It's like he's going to try and knock out this bunker now. Yeah, this person can even take a few pack shots here, and it should take that bunker down pretty quickly. I believe it's three shots that will kill it. Pack has access to target yeah, weak point though, he's got to be careful. Yeah, there's actually another AT moving up as well, and two squads of greens here. Momo backing away uh, just on time, but nice work there, able to take the bunker out. I wouldn't be surprised if Korean Army actually rebuilds it because it's just such an obstacle. It, it buys time, and now the Echelon have to actually repair that one. But look at this, this Stug E. It's hit by the AT grenade of the Rifleman, allowing the M1 to set up as well as the Stuart. The Stug E's, they just keep being wiped, but it isn't enough for Momo to take the territory back. And that's actually abandoned. Wow. We have lost a one going the other way this time. He's repairing it with his vehicle crew and driving away with his Rifleman. That's pretty clever. Maybe he's going to use the crit repair. Yep, there he uh, goes. The flamers, they can't quite wipe that one. That was smart. Wow, that's crazy. I wonder what... You know, I, ma I imagine he'll have to rebuild a few uh, rear echelon squads because he still needs those rear echelons for the repairs on the Pershing. Yeah. It's going to be one great change about the new Calliope is that you do have to build Echelon, which takes off Popcap. And the fact that you can't evacuate them, which further means that you can't go over Popcap. Um, yeah. Mainly for team games, I think. But actually, the 50 cal is stolen here by Korean Army. And he has his vet too stuck because of the, the vehicle crew, but he needs to get that out uh, and repair that one. He can probably just repair it behind his hedge. Oh man, if that takes a Faust and that bearded up rifle squad goes... Oh no, bearded up vehicle the, crew yeah, goes vehicle down. Crew. But it's still, you know, important because it was a, like a Vet 3 Stuart. Yeah. Which, which has a lot of vision, which would really help revealing these AT guns. It's not quite a... A 2-2-2 with a spotting scope, but it's still pretty good. So does the Stug retain its armor bonus now that he's decrewing it with his vetted squad? It's actually a good question. It's got the skirts on. Like, this is such a rare, like, occasion for, for a US player to get hold of a Stug. Yeah, that's a good question to someone in the chat that uh, knows a bit about the stats. So the Pershing now moving up. But there's actually two AT guns here. This could be the end of our Pershing. That's pretty good armor, though. Target, target weak, point. weak point comes through. I think he's actually out of range. No, actually no. taking more shots. Penetrations oh, do come through here. Good. There's the smoke barrage, perhaps a little bit late, but he will get the oh. Pershing out. Bounce that last shot there, so lucky. Rangers crawling up towards the garrison, but they will retreat that one. So he has the Stug E and the Stuart. It's gonna open up the middle. Where did he drop that off map smoke? It was actually on the house. Okay. So yeah, that I don't know, that was strange. I think he wanted to maybe move his ranges in or something. I thought he was he would have used it to prevent 
the pushing from getting wiped, putting it on the retreat path. Uh, either way, though, still getting hit by a Faust. So the, the top VP is pretty much going to be uncapturable by Korean Army because of that 50 cal, but the same could be said for the middle and the bottom VP by Momo. Oh, he's popping target weak point. Strip's in trouble. Ooh, is he out of range? He's still within range, but is he in vision? Stuart going in. Hits the Stuart here, but there's no support for it. It's Vet 2 pack, actually. Grim's moving up for a Faust, and so is the Pershing. He's got a damaged gun, though. He can't fire. I think no. he realizes that and backs it away. Could be it. This could be the engagement of the game here. Yeah, the Stuart's still there. It it's actually might even take a Faust here, though. The pack does survive, and the MG bunker suppressing the ranges. Man, Korean army just keeps inching forwards with his map control. Oh, he's pretty much run off the map right now. He's having so much trouble with. Oh, that's Stuart barely getting out of the range of that M1. Does uh, actually have access to the tank aim, but it's behind that little shed for now. Could even lose his Gren squad though. Oh, drops the LMG especially. That's another Stuggy. Captain's maybe trying to flank the bunker here. I'm not sure where he's going. Uh, going a little bit too deep though. The Vet 3's MG is there. So the MG on the ground hasn't been captured, but the pack walks into the Stuart. Oh, I think that was like an attack command where he lost vision or something. Fish doggy. <laughs> the M1 moving up for it though. This could definitely be a dead steward unless he does something with a smoke. Oh, loses that one. It actually will allow the LMG to be recaptured. Pershing just about back up to full though. Let's bring it's that into the combat. It's getting good vet though. Vet 2 currently. The, the vet 3 Pershing has such a huge rate of fire. Oh, Pack, now that he's too, he's got those tank grenades. Maybe you could pop those on the uh, packs as he does a drive-by. Yeah. Momo wants to get a bank of 90 munitions for the heave-up round so he can, he can burst down the Stug E very quickly. And I wonder what his next choice of unit is. Like, I, I think for Korean Army, it's going to be pretty obvious he's going to keep building Stug E's. <laughs> But yeah. as for Momo, I don't know what to say. Like, there's there's a lot of different options, and they have their own pros and cons. We'll have to see uh, what he actually does decide to go for in the end. Looks like he's going to use the uh, captain to try speed up the build. Well, oh, pack howitzer. Yeah. yeah, I think that's smart. Korean Army is, is holding on so well, and he's been losing so many Stuig E's, but it hasn't actually mattered. It's just... Momo, he can't deal with the defensive play style of Pax, Bunkers, the MG. There's even a Mortar now as well. Um, if, if Momo can, can keep this Pack Howitzer alive and do some good damage with it, um, he should be able to force away the these these Pack AT guns. Yeah, and, if he can take out that garrison in the south there that the MG is in currently, that would be such a big win because that's really causing him so many headaches. Yeah, and, and the great thing here for, for Korean Army, he's managed to save up almost enough fuel for a Tiger. Korean Army's been holding on as well as he has without a Tiger, and now he's going to have that, which is going to make the Pershing uh, not quite as impactful as it has been. Still, the Pershing is Vet 2 and, and almost on its way to Vet 3, so the Tiger's going to have a bit of a hard time, but combined with the abundance of AT guns, uh, I think the Tiger's going to be a big game changer. Yeah, Mo's got pr plenty of fuel though, so he can always go for a Jackson. Okay, here we go. That's Smoke Barrage. He wants to block off their pack. Yeah, that's going to be a dead Stug E. On the side though, there's another Stug E. So the, the Stug E actually is still there. He needs to try and finish it off with an M1 perhaps? We well, missed that last shot with the Pershing. So. Yeah, maybe he doesn't realize it's actually there still. The Stug E is going in very deep. He could take a Faust. Pack's moving up as well as Pershing's very low here, and the M1 is setting up on it, however. The Stug E getting shot by the captain. Man, this is, this is a crazy engagement right now. The middle Stug E gets taken out. The Stug E... Oh, Pack gets decreased. Yeah, that was a nice shot there. Uh, the Stug E battle continues. <laughs> Looks like the Stug E's got flanked by the Stug E off Momo. 
<laughs> oh man, it's, it's a difficult trying to cast this one, but the Stook E from Korean Army is killed by the Stook E of Momo. And now I think that is going to be uh, perhaps the swing that Momo needs. The, the Pershing's still alive uh, very critically. Uh, however, the top VP's got capped back by Korean Army. And Korean Army's been draining the VPs down. Well, actually, wow, this Paxbury crew perhaps a little bit too risky as, as it does allow the Grin Squad to get wiped. Drops the LMG. Rangers can cap that one. Still getting in the middle. Should get taken out here by this pack. Light That's actually the Light Arty. We'll kill the, the, the M1 most likely. But actually, this LMG isn't recaptured on the ground. Still getting survives. No one kills the pack, but oh. He's like costing him his own M1. Oh, Rangers have a nice Rangers. engagement here. They got the M1 for sure. Have just avoided the arc. Oh, oh no! One of oh, the Rangers no. was in the suppression radius. Nade comes through, and now he will get forced away. That one scumbag that was that was in front of the firing arc. And that bunker isn't even upgraded yet. There's no MG there. What a crazy game this has turned into. Yeah, this has been nuts. Momo really needs to kill this pack that's uh, sitting in the middle of the map here. Do you think Korean Army's going to try to go for a tiger? He's. Oh, I think he needes to. Yeah. He's with with no he's more stuggies. And he's been a manpower bled a fair bit. The pack howitzer hasn't done too much yet, but it still will start to have an impact. Yeah, well, it flattened that building, dear, and that's what allowed Momo to make that big push before. Ah, oh, okay. There's actually a 50 cal on the ground. Or a 50 cal captured by Korean Army as well as the MG42. So a lot of, of uh, MGs here. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think Korean Army is actually going to have this game. Like, when the Tiger shows up, I, I think Korean can just camp the, the VPs. Oh, this is so dense, man. This is such a good match. <laughs> We have a Vent 3 Rifle Squad with an MG42. That's going to be uh, pretty effective. Still, there's plenty of these MG bunkers. We have a forward structure under attack. I think oh, it's for Momo from as well. Pershing. Yeah, Momo yeah, can... Re he can actually rebuild the Pershing. Like, if he loses it, it's not a huge deal because he has the fuel, just the manpower. Where, say, if Korean Army loses the, the Tiger, he won't be able to rebuild that one. Uh, but still, you don't want to lose a veterancy on the Pershing. It scales so well. Um, well, I don't think Momo can really afford to lose it because he's so low on VPs right now. Yeah, it, it'll put him really far behind. There we go, smoking off the middle VP, but he's, he's flanked by a 50 cal. <laughs> he's got to smoke that as well. <laughs> wow. But the Assault Greens are in the middle VP, so there will be no capture coming through. Okay, the Stuggy is moving up from Momo. May even lose his Vet 3 rifle squad with that MG. The AT guns are both set up for it. Captain on the flank, however, actually driven past the AT guns. Where is the Pershing? It's firing on the AT guns. One AT gun is wiped here. The second one could be taken out as well. Yeah, it does. The Stuggy wipes it. There's no AT guns left here. There will definitely be Faust from the Grens, but just kidding because they died. So now there's just zero AT on the field, and Korean Army, he's neglected his Tiger. He's rebuilding a pack rather than calling it in. Yeah, that's a crazy. <laughs> Momo did this right in the nick of time. If he waited another 30 seconds, that Tiger probably would have been on the field. Yeah, now Momo is trying to destroy the packs. The best choice. Second squad of Rangers as well. Wow, well, I didn't think that was going to happen. I, I thought Korean Army was going to hold on until the Tiger. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> That was so well executed there by Momo. He had squads coming in from every direction. And it's so hard for that M1 to face and the MGs were all over the show. Yeah, and the, the Stug E at the Vet 3 with a flank. That was pretty awesome as well. <laughs> Do you think the Stug E's being Momo's most valuable unit? I mean, honestly. <laughs> 14 kills. Killed that, yeah, killed that other Stug E. Yeah, it's been quite nice. Oh, there's a wipe from the pack howitzer. Yeah, this is definitely game for Momo here. But I, I think Mo Momo just played this game pretty cautiously. Like, he 
He was always sniping Stuggies and trying to snipe units, but he didn't really, like, commit to anything that was too all-in, apart from that last play there. Um, and I think he executed it very well. He used the smoke to his advantage, flanked away the AT guns. And I, I think Korean Army's death trap was, was not going Tiger. Like, I think he maybe just built one too many Stuggies. Um, yeah. And, you know, one too many squads. Like, the Tiger should be a priority. He also had those two packs like right next to each other, which allowed Momo to flank them way more effectively. If he had them spread out a bit more, Momo would have been in a bit more trouble. That's true, yeah. Ha having the overlapping, like the, the backwards facing pack is certainly uh, a, a bit more safe. So only 68 VPs left for Korean Army, and this pack house is getting some work done. Yeah, I think he's just going to slowly drain out, but I can understand Korean Army not wanting to quit. He was so close to victory. Yeah, yeah, and, and he crawled his way back into the win in the first game. Looks like he would have uh, given himself the throne of the comeback master. But I think yeah. even if Korean Army got a Tiger, it would have been a bit tricky with the, the pretty much Vet 3 Pershing. Oh yeah, for sure. And when you, you know, get those three shots off in quick succession, it can be a real issue for the tiger as well. Using that uh, PVAP route. I mean, yeah. Vision. Especially because you can chase units down with it. Like you, you can fire without the vision. So the PVAP round's great for chasing down a tank, getting that last blow. We are losing a sector. Well, Korean army. He's looking for the VPs here, but. He doesn't really go <laughs> from another Stuggy. He's desperate. Yeah, 15 VPs left, so he didn't really have much choice there. And Momo can just hold the points with the smoke if he needs to, so... Definitely going to be game over here for Korean Army. Wow, I, I what think a close and excellent match this was. Man. Yeah. At, at the same time, I was going to say, I think Momo regrets... Not going the Calliope, but at the same time, like, if he did go Calliope, the Stook Ease would have been a really big problem for him. Like, how would he have killed the Stook Ease if he went Calliope? Yeah, he would have had to try and rely on Jackson's, and, I mean, with three AT guns, that would have been a bit of a hurdle. Yeah. You know, when you get target weak-pointed by the... by the, the, the AT guns, and even the Stugs, they don't have to stun, but they still prevent the Jackson. Jackson's are just, just not good uh, against against most compositions, uh, but yeah, the, the, the Pershing, it, it really gave him that, that strong tanky front line that he needed to, to hunt down those Stugs uh, and, and gradually uh, take this game. So well played by both of our players, you know, Tr Korean Army, he held on very well and almost took that game. Memo, I guess, playing a, a pretty calculated match there, uh, you know, not, not ever really putting himself in too much danger that he could crawl away, crawl back into this game from the the winning and then losing side and, and eventually winning and I, I do like seeing players like when when they have such a VP lead and they they use the VP lead to to buy time and slowly win where some players they're like oh man I, I only have 50 VPs left to win and then they, they try and close it out like way too early uh, and that results in them throwing so yeah that was a yeah, pretty good game I'm uh, pretty sure I'm gonna be posting this on the channel um, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I guess while we're at it, uh, Tyrope, you should probably uh, plug your channel as well as you're a pretty active co two caster. Yeah, I'm on youtube.com slash tightrope gaming. YouTube.com slash tightrope gaming. My channel being youtube.com slash generals gentlemen. Uh, so that was. Actually, I think I have exclamation mark plug. Yeah, there we go. That, that mad plug. Well, that was uh, a, a pretty intense series, and that was only oh, like two games out of three. Yeah. I bet Momo now is super drained after three oh, yeah. crazy long matches. That, that's kind of soul-crushing, those four games, uh, is, is the, the long ones, the long haul. And I, I think it's also, like, for me personally, like, if I was playing, it's... It's, it's the feeling of helplessness. It, it's kind of like, man, I wish I had rocket artillery, but I don't. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in, in the same way that you get that helplessness when you're like, man, I, like, I wish I had, 
like a suppression tool, but I don't because I'm OKW kind of thing. That's like. I'm show you the flamethrower. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, have a look at the brackets. Uh, see what we have coming up for our our semi-finals. Please subscribe to the General's Gentlemen. If you enjoy our content, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash generalsgentlemen.